Hey guys, it's me, Cubix. Today we have an exciting unboxing from the Cubicle. There's some stuff in here that I'm super excited about, and I think there's also a couple things that are more of a mystery, so we'll open this up and see what's inside. Also, obviously, this is a different camera angle, so if you like it, just let me know below. If you like the previous camera angles, then let me know. And finally, if you hear a hum in the background, it's because I'm actually 3D printing something right now. That's kind of cool. Maybe I'll show it in a future video. But otherwise, if you want to see what I'm 3D printing on a daily basis and what I'm designing, hop on over to my Twitch streams. I live stream almost every single morning and I just design kind of random cubing related things. So first, wow. Okay, looks like we have a ton of logos. So you can see these are Cubix logos. I think these are for five x five, four x four, and then we got some three x three ones in the back. So we'll put this on a couple cubes. They look so good. We also have the Shang Xiao Magic Clock for the Sang So. <laughs> I mostly got this clock because of the waifu, but uh, we'll see how it turns. We have a mystery. This is something I'm very excited about. This is a Lan Lan FTO. So for those of you who have not been keeping up with cubing at home or Twitch streams, the face turning octahedron, also called as an FTO, is currently kind of a popular puzzle. A lot of people, especially on Twitch, have been solving this and grinding and I also want to give a shout out to two specific channels. So on Twitch, um, there's Speedy Octahedron. His YouTube channel is Ben's Puzzles. And then also Lace Solves, who goes by the same name on YouTube. Both of these people have been doing a lot of FTO solves on Twitch, and it's really inspired me to sort of get into the event. I don't think I'll ever be as fast as they are, especially not Ben. He averages like 30 seconds on this thing. I, nonetheless, I'm very excited. It's a very different puzzle than any of the current WCA events. And yeah, I think it's going to be a really good challenge. <laughs> okay, and then lastly, we have the YJ Texture Cube. Um, so let's actually open this up first. I see. Okay, so the textures are impressively different from all the sides. So this is the only one, for example, with bumps. I think the two that will be most confused by are going to be the star pattern and the heart, because they both, I mean, they do feel different, but they're both kind of like beveled sides, whereas the blue side is basically flat. This is clearly a square, circle, and then dots. Um, so yeah, I think the only confusion will be yellow and red. I think everything else should mostly be okay. The turning of this puzzle is not horrible. I mean, it can't cut line to line currently, but the tensions are really tight. Yeah, I can't even disassemble it. Yeah, this is going to be really fun. Next, we'll unbox the Shang Xiao clock. So the last time I solved clock was in 2011. And I think since then, I've never even touched a clock. So I, generally speaking, I know how a clock works. I know you're supposed to solve the edges first and then the corners and then flip it and then do the same thing, I, I think. <laughs> oh, it's either that or you solve the edges on both sides first and then corners. But um, so on mine, I've heard kind of mixed reviews on this puzzle, but these pins feel really good. They're super tactile. Um, yeah, they feel really good. The thing that I think more people are having trouble with is uh, the cogs. I think some people are saying that it's not tactile enough. And I definitely see that. So even for someone like me who does not solve clock, the cogs are both very stiff and there's almost no tactility. Like I, I can stop it, you know, in between the dots here. There's, yeah, there's almost no tactility. Um, if anything, there's more auditory feedback than there is uh, tactile feedback. So this is potentially problematic. So interestingly enough, um, when the pins are depressed, at least when one pin is depressed, let's check some of the other sides here. Okay, so when the pins are depressed one at a time, there is a lot of tactility. So this feels good. Yeah, that feels good. It's, it's just when the entire mechanism is rotating together that there's really no tactility. Pin locks a little bit. 
Yeah, so here's the problem. When these hands don't align perfectly, so if it's off by a little bit, the pins get stuck. But because there's no tactility, it's very hard to align perfectly. And so I assume for people who are fast at clock, they're going to get a lot of catches. My first impressions of it though, is that compared to a Lingao clock that I used to have like 10 years ago, I think it's better, but it's not convincingly better. I, th I think I'm seeing some of the issues that people have mentioned in videos, uh, mostly with the pins catching as well as the tactility issue with the cogs. So hopefully if we lube it and, and break it in and stuff, it'll be good. But if not, um, this will be a project where maybe we try to design something that's a little bit better that we can put into this clock. All right, next we'll open up the FTO, which I'm probably the most excited about. So from all the videos I've seen and all the streams, I, I know enough about this puzzle to know that I shouldn't expect too much for the turning. I've heard the hardware is not great. It also feels incredibly heavy and dense. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> this is this is like 2008 turning. <laughs> I don't even really know how to hold this puzzle. So for those of you who have never seen an FTO before, it's kind of like a mix between 4x4, Megaminx 3x3. It's kind of a mix of a lot of puzzles, which is why I'm so excited about it. So if you look at it from this angle, it has three layers. So similar to a 3x3, you can rotate it like this. The difference though between this and a 3x3, of course, is that there's eight faces. And so there's eight sides that you can actually turn. Um, and so it quickly becomes a little bit complicated. The other thing to keep in mind is that there are no actual centerpieces that have stickers. So similar to a 4x4, I believe for this puzzle, you actually have to remember your color scheme. Um, otherwise, yeah, things are going to get hairy really quickly. So we'll scramble it, but I have no idea how to solve it. So this will force me <laughs> to, to learn how to solve it. The turning for this thing is also super weird. It's, I, I, I don't even know like how to hold it. It's just like, it's a remarkably weird puzzle in a good way. I mean, the turning is, it feels like a very solid puzzle, but the turning is really not good. So we might have to lube it. Again, if you want to know more about this puzzle, I highly recommend checking out Ben Streeter's channel on YouTube. It's Ben's Puzzles. I'll have a link in the description. He is the world's best at this puzzle, and he's been solving it for a couple of years now. And yeah, watching him solve this thing is amazing. All right, so now we have a mystery. I'm not sure if this is even a cube or if it's just something else. Oh, it is a cube. Ah. Uh, I'm a cube noob. I, I don't remember what cube this is. I think it's a GTS 3M or something, or maybe it's a WRM. In any case, I think the very exciting thing here is this QR code in the middle. So we have a QR code here. Um, I'm just using my phone's QR code reader and We'll see, okay, so it looks like there's a link there. So we'll search and it looks like it's taking us to a YouTube page. So we'll see what this is. Okay, fantastic. So if you thought that I was trolling with my GAN 369M video, uh, we all just collectively got rickrolled again. <laughs> this is really, really cool. So this was something that Phil mentioned to me um, a couple days ago that they had this new idea of having QR codes on logos basically. And so um, potentially for creators such as myself, um, these QR codes could link to different things, be it product pages, YouTube channels, et cetera. So, so I think this is going to offer a lot of creative options in the future. Plus it does look really cool. It's kind of a unique idea to just have a QR code as a logo. Um, it looks clean. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. I almost forgot that we also got these amazing logos. All right, so here I have a GAN excess. Let's put a logo on it. I'm actually going to put on the yellow side because I'm used to seeing my logo on a yellow background. That looks so good. Look at how good that looks. This is an MGC 4x4. It's a good cube. I'm not going to take the logo off right now. I'll do it maybe after the video, but let's see here. Get a 4x4 sheet. So I just realized that this main camera stopped recording halfway through, so I'm not really sure what footage was captured and what wasn't. Hopefully most of it was, but I'm not sure if they're for sale. If they are, I'll have a link uh, to it in the description along with everything else. This QR code logo is really cool. I, I like the idea. There's a lot of different options, I think, in the future that can be done with it. 
The current link is a little bit troll, but I think that's typical of the cubicle, so I respect that. This FTO turns horribly, but it was expected, and regardless, I think it's just a fun puzzle to even think about. I think you'll be seeing this cube a lot on my live streams on Twitch, um, so I'll probably set this up as like a channel point reward or something um, where I do some blind solves with this. And finally, the Shangshao clock, it's, I think it's okay. I think with breaking in, it could be a very good puzzle, but currently the pins are a little bit catchy, and I see what people say about the cogs not being super tactile. So if I can't break it in, I'll see if I can find a way to mod it. And if I do, I'll make a video about it. So thanks to the cubicle for sending all of this. I have a lot of new things to play with, and I'm very excited about that. If you're interested in any of the puzzles that I've shown here today, I'll leave links in the description so you can go buy them. Don't forget to use discount code CUBIX for 5% off your entire order at the cubicle. And yeah, thanks for watching, and until next time, toodles.